Hello everyone, welcome back to Cost Streams TV. We are done week four of The War Within, and you know what? Not much has changed, but I'm having fun anyway. Like last week we talked about all the Mythic Ch Mythic Plus challenges that we're having, the difficulty, the scaling, some of the class tuning. And you know what? All of that aside, even though this week I still did quite a bit of keys, I think we got about 23 or between 20 and 25 keys done this week. I still actually kind of had fun on my DK. I did I did these the four tens that are required for raid, and it's kind of Funny, if you looked at my keys last week, six of them were miskeys. I did four 10 miskeys, two nine miskeys, and then I think I had a 10 city of threads in there that, oh my god, it was an hour long city of threads. I fell over to a random pack right after you do the second boss. You go up the ramp there and I pulled the first pack just fine. I pulled the second pack and I got me lead for 15 million in 0 0.1 seconds. It was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. Like we kept the pull alive and we kind of kept going. What an experience that was, right? So that was kind of what we did and on top of that the cool thing is that you know this is the first time since probably before bfa where we're into like week three and i'm okay with not really pushing myself to that limit of you know sweaty let's get into 12 keys and try as hard as we can and get frustrated at people i'm actually enjoying that lower range now i do think item level has made it a little easier to do some of the nines and 10 keys now it does help melee auto attacks for 15 million in 0.1 seconds that just still needs to get tuned because it's unbelievable that that's a thing I get meleeed harder than tyrannical bosses can crush me for doing their tank busters. That makes no sense to me. Blizzard still needs to look at that. I've had fun still regardless. I've done other things, right? And this is some of the stuff we're going to talk about. What are the other things I've done? First of all, I like a while ago, I was talking about I want to keep up with my professions and all that stuff. And I think I've done a pretty good job. This week, Dark Moon Fair is around. So I do encourage you to go to Dark Moon Fair because if you have the Kazalgar professions, there is a quest that gives you three points for those professions. So I did my cooking. I did my jewel crafting, my enchanting. Uh, my mining and my fishing so I got extra points for those professions out of that and they're basically three free points the quests are very simple some of it you have to buy stuff find stuff around the grounds so I took care of doing that and it's been very lucrative like I currently fly around quite a bit to get herbs and mining ore so I can either send it to my jewel crafter to make the gilded vial so I can my my alchemist can make rank two potions without using concentration and then I'm farming as much herbs as I can to refine them to get rank three anyway it's been a process but I've been able to keep up with my own potions right now as well which is really cool so I, this is the first time where it's like hey this is kind of fun and i could probably start making rank three soon so it's really exciting to be doing stuff like that because previously it's like i would just focus so much on mythic plus that i didn't have time to go farm i didn't have time to do other things and now with these changes i'm like hey let's try something else you know some of the other things we regularly do i hop on each of my tanks and i actually go do the the awaken the machine quest that is the quest in the ringing deeps where you go fight the 20 waves of mobs that come at you at the end of that it drops a mouth i'm still trying to get that mount still don't have it but i still do it anyway like i have the time to do that it takes about 20 minutes you know it's like maybe a minute or so per wave plus the intermission and it's and it's worth it it's actually been a lot of fun doing those things and it's like i find new ways to kind of make it go faster right so it's not always about just the sweaty like let's do as many keys as possible and honestly i've been still depleting a lot of keys and something i've started doing i'm going to show you guys in a few videos down the road is i've actually started tracking all of my mythic plus runs what classes are in it one of the streamers i watch actually has a excel doc that he uses and I've been able to copy that into Google, into my Google Drive and remove all of his information and then just kind of use it as a tracking system. So that's something we're going to go over in some later videos. Not right now. I think I want to get more data, but I'm still at like about 40% depletion rate. So that's pretty high, but pretty standard, but I'm having fun. Like the reality is I'm actually playing with guildies more often. I'm not really pugging keys and it's it's been enjoyable just shooting the shit. And this is, this is to me what World of Warcraft is about, right? Like, yes, the tuning is a mess. Yes, 12 keys. Jumping into a 12 is like jumping into a 15 because that 20% damage and health boost you know what i'm okay with not doing that yet and just kind of working on my characters and building that progression and getting that gear and speaking of that let's jump into my main character and let's just start talking about the dk and some of the things i've done on him this week so first of all just quickly on the death knight we started last week at 619.63 item level this week and we finished the week at 624.38 so there's quite a lot of upgrades there so one of the things i did get is my wrists my uh, mythic track wrist from ration on when we killed him on his on our reclair and then really i upgraded a ton of my gear up to 619 avoiding to use the rune crest i used some of the gilded because i mean why not once you upgrade your gear once you get a new piece the cost to go back to that item level is cheaper right so that's what i've been doing i just been getting gear and upgrading into 619 some of my tier pieces i just upgraded to six to six hero that is where a lot of my upgrades have come from so yeah going going into week
week five at 624.38 eye level and we still have to open my vault which we're going to do here in a second but let's first take a look at some of the completed keys we did at 4io we ended last week at 2281 and like I said, I ran a lot of the same keys last week, so I'm not really pushing IO. I do want to get 2,500 to get the appearance that you get for that. So I did do sub keys, even though they were failed and depleted, I still got IO for it, which is kind of cool. So one of the keys we did was a 10 necrotic wake that gave us 26 IO. We did a 10 mists, which gave us 16 IO. And this key was actually timed. I need to find the video. I'd like to post it on my channel so you guys take a look at it. But we timed our first 10 key, which was a mist. And then we also timed a nine stone vault for 48 points and that was a really exciting because i had a failed seven so going into a nine stone vault timing it i had a disc priest in the group this guy was doing phenomenal i was very impressed he understood the dispel on the first boss so that was really cool so we ended this week we're going into uh, week five at 2374 i'm very excited i'd like to get an even number across the board for all my keys like i have a lot of nines but they're not timed so what i want to start doing is going in through all the keys that are at nine or lower and timing them all and then start trying them at tens i'm going to do the tens anyway because i need them for vault to continue on the mythic team that we will still do i'll probably do four mists again but what we want to start doing now is to actually timing our keys at nine across the board moving into 10 moving into 11 i think that's something i can do i'm getting more comfortable with the death knight now that his eye level is rising so with that let's quickly just jump into his vault now we are keeping it as frost we're going to open that up in prospect see what we get i'm excited we have the two mythic raid vault slots plus a heroic slot we've got two mythic dungeon slots and then we have all of our delves because we did delves last week for delve week all right so let's dig in and see what we get we have a haste verse and avoidance headpiece the avoidance is nice if i were to catalyze but i really don't need that much haste so this is kind of not the best choice we have the Siriki zealot insignia this is actually a pretty nice ring on Unfortunately, it's so heavy haste, so it's kind of useless to us. And and even though it does return mana to my ally and gives me a ton of versatility, that haste is way too high for me to take on my death knight. So that is an unfortunate raid mythic track vault slots. And then lastly, we have a hero track shoulder piece. We already have them, so we're not taking that. Moving on down, we have hero track hands, which are haste first. Even the secondary stats suck on this one. We have a one-handed mythic track weapon, which really would be great for frost right so this might not be a total loss in what we get in our vault and then lastly we also have the two-handed sword again kind of useless because we have the crafted weapon so we're kind of stuck so this kind of lands us in a weird spot the sockets would be very nice to start collecting so we can get those upgrades or i can take the mythic track one-hander haste versatility which gives us another mythic track one-hander and that means we would have a pretty decent frost weapon setup and i think because we're so early into the season i'm going to take the one-hander for my frost spec i'm sure i'll be able to get more sockets down the road plus most of my gear is hero track right now i don't really want to be putting sockets in that until i get mythic track gear so we take the one-hander and we start with a 10 Siege of Boralus this week on the Death Knight. Okay, so with that, let's jump into one of the other alts we played. We actually played my warrior and we did mostly delves on him. Again, it was delve week, right? So doing the tier eight bountiful delves was really worth it, right? And my warrior got a ton of upgrades out of that. I did upgrade some of his gear just randomly, but some of the big pieces that we got is we replaced a 554 chess piece with a 603 piece from delves. One of our trinkets came from delves as well. We've got the kiss of death that replaced another very, I think it was a 571 trinket, so it wasn't too bad. And then we also replaced our 580 boots with 603 boots and then we upgraded some of the pieces because we had the valor stones to do it and it was cheap that brought us up from like 578 to about 598 significant upgrades on the warrior he was a lot of fun to play again like we were just doing delves but again it was that cool relaxed thing i wanted to do keys but i thought you know i'm getting the hero track out of the delves so let's just see what we get we're gonna open his spec still opening it in brought so i'm curious if the delve is just gonna be trinkets or what that's gonna look like and here we go what do we get what do we get what do we get we have hero track hands which we could catalyze because we got the lfr veteran ones and then we have a crit verse neck piece this is a huge neck piece this is really really nice i think i'm gonna take the neck piece just for the crit in the verse although haste is good for us too let's take a quick look at what is recommended so both of these are huge the stat primary stat wise obviously the hands are the biggest upgrade and we do have the catalyst charge but because we already have two piece i think i take this 616 neck because that is so much crit and so much verse i think that looks good now you know what we're gonna go for the main stat we have a catalyst charge let's take advantage of that let's take the hands let's see what that brings us up and eye level and we're going to catalyze them and it should be pretty significant if you think about it Ooh, we hit 600 eye level we are now 600.44 going into week five 
Hold up. Is that a chamois we're looking at? You bet it is. Why are we looking at a chamois? Well, buddies were actually running some keys and they already had a group that had a tank and three DPS. All they needed was a healer. And I said, hey, you know what? Would my chamois be high enough to join you guys? And they're like, they were doing about three to five keys. And I thought, that's reasonable. I upgraded what I could with Valor Stones. I grabbed some stuff out of my war bank and we got up to like 575. So we took the chamois through some keys. We did a five stone vault and three two keys. The two keys were absolutely fine. Stone vault hurt a little bit i just feel like my heels are tickling people so we're got an extra vault today we've got a chamois vault and i might play resto chamois a little more i mean i've always liked them I, I got 3k last season or sorry i got 3k in shadowlands with mine so maybe we'll do that but let's see what he gets oh we get that is a massive hero track crit verse i think this is one of our best shield because crit verse is what we want and then we also have champion track boots but obviously we're taking this hero track shield immediately and i wonder what this transmog looks like all right transmog is kind of lame but overall we now are 579.44 going to make and you know what i might play my chamois a little more just like i said i'm trying new things right we're trying new things and lastly we continue our mount collection now let's first talk about the thing that i've been running for weeks and continue not to have my mountain that's right that is under rot i didn't post about it last week because the video was long enough but this week let's quickly touch on it we are current 474 attempts at under rot. that means i have run under rot 474 times and i still do not have the mount i believe that if i finish this week we will have about 500 attempts wait and see tune in next week and you'll know how the underwrought went mounts that we actually acquired so first of all this is the mount that you get from the trading post this month for completing the journey all the way across this is the death stalker similar to the ones you got in shadowlands it's the little jellyfish they get from that Zareth Mortis area. It's just a reskin and a recolor so I think I have three of these now. One of the other mounts we got is the hand of Resh Kagal. I've always wanted these hand mounts and I know the journey to get them is kind of annoying so I've got finally got one. This is the one you can buy from the trading post so we got this mount as well. And one other mount we actually got, which I am so excited for, is we got the mount from the Lurker of the Depths, Old Mole Rufus. Here he is in his glory, sniffing the dirt like a mole does. So I'm really happy we got this mount. No more doing Lurker of the Deeps, because there is less and less people doing that, that mount farm. So I'm glad I have it, and it is now out of the way. And then other than that, out of the trading post, we kind of just poked around to see what was in there. I kind of liked a lot of the different cosmetics that they had. Obviously, we bought the Scarecrow. I saw it on a Vulpira, and I wasn't originally going to buy it, but with the ears sticking out, the tail sticking out, it was the cutest thing I've seen, and I had to buy that transmog. So I'll definitely be using it on the Vulpira. A couple other things, we bought like the cloak that was available, the white cloak that you could get because you could do one shoulder at a time. I really like that. And then we also bought the bow, the white bow that was there. So those are some of the other things we got this this week and that really ends the journey of week four like like i said i haven't been pushing myself to do some of the hard and sweaty things that i usually would i've changed it up and i'm glad that i did it's been a little more reasonable so what does this week look like we are going back into mythic raid last week we were progging brew twister we're doing a reclear this week we're going to do a full heroic clear and then we're going back into mythic we should be able to do the first four bosses pretty simply i'll be streaming that tuesday and thursday um and then we're going back into brew twister our best pull on brew twister is 54 percent. i think we're about 50 just over 50 pulls in so i am very excited excited to kind of go back and get that done hopefully we get close to that you know sub 20 sub 10 percent mark and see how we do with brew twister currently three tanking it and four healing just to get further into the fight we'll see how that that continues for us and then on top of that i do plan on running some more mythic pluses like i said i'm going to try to do some nines across the board on the dk get my tens done as well maybe run the warrior a little bit now that he's 600 i'm wondering how those seven eights and nines start to feel in the warrior and then maybe we'll pick away at the resto chamois a little bit our mount farms will continue and and then we will also be herbing and mining and trying to get as much as we can to continue supplying our main characters with what they need to be able to go into mythic raiding and into mythic mythic plus dungeons so that's really the plan for the week let me know in the comments down below how your week was what, what did you get in your vault are you enjoying the war within do you agree that the tuning is a little whack right now and needs to kind of get looked at i hope you're enjoying the game the war within has been a successful launch and expansion so far just because there are sections of the game that are tedious and painful right now let's not take away for how, from how how awesome it was let me know in the comments down below what you think of where we're at today how your week is going and what you plan to do in the upcoming weeks in the war within until next time i will see you guys in kazalgar or the mythic plus dungeon area peace out everybody